Welcome to season two of Chillin' with Ice. I'm your host, Lori Fetrick, also known as Ice from the hit iconic show, American Gladiators. If you're new to the show, make sure you go back and listen to some of the funniest jaw drop and behind the scenes stories from some of the original American Gladiators. In season two of Chillin' with Ice, you're gonna hear some real one-on-one -on -one conversations with pop culture icons, athletes, and lifestyle gurus, and that's just to name a few. We will be covering everything from 90s classic, fitness, anti-aging, to recent trends, and so much more. This podcast is where legends live on. Before we dive into our incredible episode today, I want to let you know that this is a self-funded podcast, and I would love your support. For the cost of a cup of coffee a month, you can donate to my Patreon page, and that would make all the difference in the world. For the small donation, you will get back so much in rewards, like you can watch all of my podcasts on video. I will have exclusive content like behind the scenes footage, a private Facebook group where you can interact with me directly and other VIP fans, a monthly Q&A, direct shout outs and follows from me to you on your social media and so much more. Find me on Patreon at Chillin' With Ice or click the link in the show notes now. Okay, let's dive in. We are chilling with ice. How you doing today, Jeff? I'm doing great. Awesome. How you doing? How I'm was good, New York? Good, good. New York was amazing. New Rock York was on. amazing. Took a helicopter ride, saw the whole city. It was no just way. insane. That's awesome. I know. It's so cool. Yeah. So uh, interesting enough, the guest we have in tonight, I met him there. Oh, cool. He was sitting right next to me signing autographs. Nice. And I was super impressed and all starstruck and everything. That's dope. So he's 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 a he is the man. He's Let's here. put it that way. All right, let me let me give you a little bit about his background. Who do we got? Um, he is six one, weighing in at two hundred and seventy pounds of I would I would say pure muscle. <laughs> nice. Um, he actually made his first wrestling debut in 2009, and I know he'll correct me if I'm wrong, but it says here he was only 18 years old. He wrestled with the APW, which is all pro wrestling, for over a decade. During his time, he held the World Wide Internet Championship. Then he moved over to the AEW, which is all elite wrestling. He currently has 80 wins, 36 losses in the AEW, and I had so much fun sitting next to him over at the New York Comic Con. That's where I met this gentleman. And I would like to give a good chilling with ice welcome to Powerhouse Hobbs, a.k.a. Will Hobbs. How are you oh doing, my Hobbs? Woo Will I'm Hobbs. Great. You, over here, you over here making me blush while I'm waiting <laughs> on the sun to get out of basketball practice. Um, <laughs> that's the, probably the best introduction I've had. Oh, come on. You have done a lot. And I yeah. actually last night sat and watched, I don't know how many of your matches. And I was so impressed. And first of all, dude, you dominate. I mean, seriously, you dominate in size and strength when you're in the ring. It's just mind blowing. It's, it just all comes natural to me. I spent my whole life watching wrestling. I think I went, I was like six months old. My grandma said when I went to my first show. Wow. You know, obviously, obviously, I don't remember, but all everything in the rain comes so natural. <laughs> so a like, lot, you know, it's interesting because as I was doing a lot of my research and going over different things, there was a question that somebody came up with and they actually asked me, they go, wait a minute. So he went to wrestling school. A lot of people don't realize there is wrestling school. You guys learn how to do this. I mean, it comes natural to you, but all those moves that you guys make in the in the ring, I mean, you guys have to learn those so you don't actually seriously get hurt, right? Yeah, first and foremost, it's, it's like you want to, whenever you're in the ring with someone, your job is to protect them. There's one false move, you could be paralyzed, they could be paralyzed, and it can, it can all go to hell. Um, but going to school, it's, man, there was 25 people in my class. Okay. And only myself and another person survived, and he's currently still wrestling on the independent scene. And man, we went through hell for like two years before we even got a match. Okay, so and you actually—it was two years before you got a match, then. Yeah, before like I had my first official match. Um, I was one of the ones that went on eBay 
and bought some generic gear and some generic boots. <laughs> right on. And some knee pads from Big Five. And someone didn't happen to show up for a battle royal, and we just learned how to go over the top rope backwards. And my trainer was like, well, guess what? You're uh, getting in the mix tonight. And I was so happy, and it was like, okay, um, I'm the new booty in there. And probably like eight guys, you know, just spent time chopping me and hitting me. And I thought it was the best best shit ever because it was like, <laughs> I'm doing something. Like, we're, we're TV cameras are there. Wow. Handheld cameras and, you know, so, but it, it was awesome. Like, I, I, I had so many people tell me I couldn't do it and it's, and it's all paying off, so. So you were the underdog. Yeah, especially where I'm from. You know, being from East Palo Alto, which is a two square mile city in Northern California and be the former uh, murder capital of the United States. Wow. You know, a lot of drugs out here. So people expect you to, by the time like you're like 18, to either be locked up or dead. So, wow. So I also read that you were actually raised by your grandparents. And were they the ones that kind of got you into wrestling and taking you to the matches? Yeah. So my grandparents moved from Mississippi, I think like 1961 or 62, took a Greyhound bus with my dad uh, to to San Francisco. They lived across the street from this venue called the Cow Palace, which Uh is like I I consider it the MSG of the West Coast. And so they live right across the street from it above a little liquor store and they went to their first wrestling show and they were going consistently every other week, taking my dad, my aunts and uncles. And, you know, I know they went to see the Jackson five there, Elvis, Frank Sinatra, Marvin Gaye. So but by the time I came along, it, wrestling was already on in the house and it was like, okay. <laughs> but so my grandma said, stick with you first my show. So. So your grandmother was the first one that took you. That's, that's awesome. Now, are they still alive yeah. today? Are your grandparents no, still alive? No, they, uh, they passed away. Yeah. You know, I, I always put the put the blame on her, like why a lot of her furniture got broke mm-hmm. and why her butt whoopings growing up. It was because uh, <laughs> she she put this wrestling in me. I put a lot of blame on her. She used to say it wasn't true. It wasn't her fault. So, but uh, it, was, it was her fault. So... When you and your brother were growing up, I know, I mean, there's a lot on the internet, but then there's a lot that's not on the internet. And I know that it said that you guys were going to be kind of like the duel and manager and wrestler. And then unfortunately, your brother passed away at 21 years old. So at that point in time, I guess my question is, is what did you continue your path? in the name of kind of like your brother and it was just like okay this is what i want to do and i i mean is that something that kind of really drove you even further yeah i would say that and just everyone saying i couldn't do it i i used to get teased for watching wrestling because where i'm from everybody either plays football or basketball or baseball or even soccer so you know everybody knew wrestling wasn't so so called real you know it was it was phony but it's it was something I loved, and he always supported it. Um, but yeah, it was that was that was my guy. Like he he was my manager. He was my hype man. So it, I remember it was uh, September of 2020. I wasn't signed with AEW yet, and um, it was during the pandemic. We had a pay per view uh, called All Out. It's one of our yearly pay per views. Our big one of our biggest ones. And I'm in this battle royal, not signed. And I remember I'm just going through people, eliminating people. And my name is just trending on Twitter. And and so happened that day, I like, after the match was over, I just sat down and, you know, Dustin Rhodes came up to me. He was a legend in the business. Him and his uh, father and his brother's currently in the business. Um, came up to me, asked me what was wrong. And so happened that day, of that pay-per-view was the anniversary of my brother's killing. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just felt like everything was, was coming together. So a little emotional moment for me. Oh, absolutely. I can only imagine. And you also apparently got shot in the forearm. What happened there? Yeah, I got a nice little, little, little reminder. A um, little battle wound. I, I look at uh, before I go out every match, I just look down and, 
there it is. It's a reminder where I came from. Not to get into too much detail, my brother uh, was living a life he shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Um, And fortunately, uh, I was coming home one day and he was on the porch and a car came by and it was a drive-by shooting. He pushed me out the way. I got hit and, you know, he uh, ended up passing away because of that. So it's it's a reminder. Wow. I'm so sorry. Every day when I look down. Wow. That is, that's, that is so hard to, I would think so looking at that every day, but yet, man, I'm glad you're still here. You, it's, it's, it's motivating. It's motivating for me to, to I keep going. Bet. When you started wrestling, how, uh, yeah. what was your weight when you started wrestling? Probably 150 pounds, 151 <laughs> pounds. Dude. Okay. I'm 145. Hey, I'm <laughs> I mean, you can go on my, go on my, go on my Instagram, man. My very first match, I was maybe like. I mean, geez, 100, 100, 150, I would say. No more than that. So did you create no your character? Did you create it or did it kind of uh, with a little help with different? Will Hobbs, yes. I got help. The powerhouse name came from uh, our owner and CEO, Tony Khan. Okay. You know, he's a big hacksaw. And he looked at me and was like, powerhouse. And I'm like, oh, I dig it. And it, and it it stuck. Yeah, you are. So it's either like when I'm walking through the airport, walking around, I'm either hearing Hobbs or people yelling at me, powerhouse to get my attention. And there's a few times I'm like looking around like, where? <laughs> and I'm pointing like you. And I'm, it, it's, it's funny because my, my older son and I, we went to the gym on Monday night and some guy comes up to me and he goes, hey, do you watch wrestling? I'm like, yeah, I, I love wrestling. And he goes, do you know who Powerhouse Hobbs is? He did I'm like, not. Yeah, I, I know him really well. Like, and he's like, "Oh, do you?" I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." And he's just like staring at me and goes and walks away. And like five minutes, he comes back with his phone, looking at a picture and looking at me. I'm like, "Yeah, that's me." So it was it was pretty funny. I like messing with people like that, dude. How could anybody mistake you for anybody else? I mean, you're six one, two seventy. You have a a special look to you and somebody's actually going to question if you're powerhouse Hobbs. That's kind of, it it's actually kind of funny. It happens. And that's when, that's when I get the, like the, the Iggy like to go ahead and go ahead. Let me mess with him a little bit. Oh yeah, exactly. How many matches a week do you actually have? Uh, we have live TV Wednesdays okay. and live TV Saturdays. Sometimes we have to do a double duty. Mm-hmm. on uh, one of our on either one of those shows but we have a live or excuse me a television program wednesday night which is AEW dynamite which is our flagship show AEW rampage which airs friday friday nights and another live show uh AEW collision which airs saturday nights so plus we have our youtube uh show um roh which airs thursdays so we're we're on so you're well, doing a it, lot during the week. So I was going to say you're doing at least two major matches a week. Then am I? Is that about? Well, yeah. Right? Okay. Sometimes you have to do double double duty shows. Tell but me. Sometimes you may have to do four. Sometimes you may have to do three, two, one. Okay, so you guys are probably getting way more injured than any of our gladiators ever did. I mean, what kind of injuries have you? I don't know. Watching the, watching the documentary, you guys got banged up a lot. <laughs> I didn't know you guys got banged up like that. I'm like, golly, separated shoulders, torn muscles. I'm like, well, we, we didn't have gladiator camp to go to, which we should have. We should have had some kind of gladiator school or gladiator camp to go to, just like you guys have wrestling school to go to, to like actually help us not get injured, you know, learn how to fall, learn how to take a hit, you know any of that kind of stuff, but they never did anything mm-hmm. like that for us. They just threw yeah. us in and said, here you go. Bill's, you know, the whistle rings and, and you're like off to the races. I think that's what made you guys so, what made you guys so special. Cause it, it, it was all real. Yeah. It was like 100%. Do you, how do you, how do you take it when people constantly challenge you with, is it real? Is it fake? I, I, I laugh because they don't know what, what we go through and the preparation it takes to put on a good match, the preparation it takes 
to be mentally ready to entertain thousands of people, the preparation it takes to, if you're not feeling well, to still give these fans 100% because they, they pay their money. And I know, like, I've been a fan going to shows. Like, you expect anyone walking down that aisle and stepping in that ring to give you 100%. Mm-hmm. Because you're, you're in a vet in them. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's our job to, to, I personally think it's my job to, for someone that's had a hard day at work or have their boss yelling at them, it's my job to make you boo me. Like, get some of that anger out. Cheer me. Talk shit to me. Like, I'm sorry. For that. <laughs> um, oh, like, you can cuss. <laughs> you can totally cuss on my show. Get, get, all, get, <laughs> get all that shit out. Like, yell at me. Like, last night I had a guy, like, yelling at me. He was turning red, and I look at him and just stare at him. He's getting more mad. I'm thinking in my head, like, yeah, buddy, I got you. <laughs> get, get all that out. So anytime I have to go and perform, I, I, I have to give the people 100%. I don't take any of this for granted because it all can be taken away. Oh, I, I don't know. like being complacent where I'm at. You know, I like to, even if it's taking one step up a ladder, you know, I don't, I don't want to stay in the same spot. I want to keep going and going. Yeah, I get you. I hear you on that one. Hey, well, we're going to take a quick break really quick. And when we come back, um, we're going to get to know the difference between powerhouse Hobbs and the real Will Hobbs. And we'll be right back. For those of you that want to rock my gear, check out my store at icetshirts.com. Find the gladiator in you with these iconic styles. Get your chillin' with ice gear along with many other cool styles such as the OG Gladiator. We have that in t-shirts, hats, and hoodies. Plus my all-time favorite, the beautiful badass t-shirt. I've got a hat to match that one and so much more. Score your ice merch today, icetshirts.com, where legends live on. So the question, the question here is, what is the difference between powerhouse hobs and the real day-to-day Will Hobbs. Oh, man. Let's because you see. look like the dude Power to up. hate out in that ring. I could be wrong, but you look mean sure. when you're in that ring. <laughs> yes. Yeah, supposed to. That's the job. That's, that's, that's when I get to, like, let everything out. Anything that's frustrating me, I get to let it out. Like, I, I want you to... I want everyone that's in that arena to be afraid of me. That's I want a- people watching at home when I do something. I want them to turn their head and be like, "Ugh, like did you see that?" So uh, that that's powerhouse Hobbs. Will Hobbs is quiet, sometimes shy, keep to myself. You know, that's that's, that's usually what I do. I mean, I have I have a routine that I do that I like to stick with, and powerhouse Hobbs loves the spotlight you know, loves the tension. So you're like the nitro of the gladiators. Cause nitro <laughs> was the one being that... number one, you know, shoot. I, I, <laughs> about Dan, uh, when we were in comic guy, he's like, you're going to be my son. And I'm like, all right, cool. He's introducing me as a son. And I'm like, Hey, what's up dad? You know, like, did you guys go over there and meet my dad? Oh my so, God. So yeah, that's a good pair. I, I, I always wonder what that is with Nitro, because every time we do a, something with Nitro, we did, a, we did a podcast up in Santa Barbara, and there was a young Asian girl, and he's like, you're going to be my daughter. And I was like, do you have this alter ego to where you need to be everybody's dad or, like, brother or something? It's so funny, you know? Well, we, we, looked up, we looked up to you guys growing up, so it's just, man, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know you guys were going to be there, and I was like, what really like man that was <laughs> i know it was so cool sitting and signing next to you now you told me over the phone that you used to actually play gladiator games in your backyard yes so we would have like whatever we could find around the house like we had uh man we had life jackets uh we would put on and those would be our vest <laughs> we would go in the backyard and find rope and do like tug of war and jump off trees and barbecue pits and throwing water balloons at each other. It's like whatever we could find. Like we used to have this big uh, water gun that you stick in a bucket and you suck all the water out. And that used to be, you know, we used to shoot each other, used to try to dodge the water. And, you know, we would put on boxing gloves and put them at the end of like a stick and 
joust each other until so somebody got hurt and <laughs> went and cried and my grandma shut the whole shit down. And then, you know, we just, so yeah. So it, it was fun growing up. That's awesome. So if you had a gladiator name, what do you think it would be? Oh, man. I know it's like, <laughs> only thing I could think of would be a the Eliminator, but that's the name of the, the event. So <laughs> yeah, but it's still kind of cool, though. So It's still kind of a cool name. That, that would be my name, probably the Eliminator. The or Eliminator. The juggernaut. <laughs> you know, all, all the names I came up with, they're named after events. Yeah, I know. Exactly. So, Will, what is the biggest challenge in the wrestling world? I mean, because it is the entertainment for industry. Me? Yeah, for you. I think if you if you don't connect with the audience, you're not going to survive. And some people have that natural charisma. Some don't. Some have to learn it. Some don't get it. So it's, it's connecting with the audience and finding that extension of your personality that you could be times 100. Mm. You know, like me, when I go out, I, I'll walk up to the ring and talk shit and be like, watch what I'm going to do to him. Just yell, you know. <laughs> Like, who's going to stop me? It's like Chris Jericho last night called me and said, I was, I'm big. And I'm like, yeah, I'm big black ball. And, you know, getting a reaction from the people. So I just think if you don't have that charisma, then something, so, if you don't have anything that's going to connect with the audience, you, you won't survive. Yeah, that's, I mean, that, that kind of goes with, you know, a lot of different, uh, you know, reality shows, entertainment industry. You've got to connect with your fans. you got to connect mm -hmm. with the audience. Same thing with gladiators. We had to learn how to connect with our audience, especially when we were doing the live tour. Um, so are yeah. you the guy to beat? Are you the man I'm in the, the ring? I'm, I'm the guy right now that doesn't take any shit, like, the last, I want to say the month, last month for me has been incredible because I beat one of the greatest wrestlers to ever lace up a pair of boots in the ring, Chris Jericho. There's nobody like me. I, I am that guy. And it's coming out, you know, just like I said, anybody can get it. So. so who decides, and because this is where I don't understand wrestling. So is there a decision on who wins or loses the matches or is it really... A wrestling match when you're in there I mean, it's it's predetermined okay it, it's the outcome pre okay. but um it, it's our job to to tell a good story and to make everyone believe it to put people on their toes for instance uh i went up against samiro who's a well-known name and we had a at our pay-per-view in chicago and it was a meat fest and what i mean by that it's another big guy 270 pounds were hitting each other like hard and you know, say about 15,000 people are chanting we want me it was it was good and it was just two guys hitting each other and we actually realized that, that we can tell a good story by just beating the hell out of each other and the fans just feeding off of it so mm -hmm. it's also just listening to listening to what the audience wants and you have to change things on the fly a lot of stuff we did was not planned it was just going off the fly and feeding off the people. So they do allow you to do that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hands down. Happens all the time. All the time it happens to you. So if you were not wrestling today, what do you think that you would be doing? Playing football or probably being a PE teacher. <laughs> a PE teacher. You'd be... You'd be I mean, you, you do. You come across a little shy, but your size would scare the shit out of little kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you're going to run this mile. Like, I don't care. Whatever. <laughs> Tell mom and dad, but you're going to run. Like, <laughs> so. Oh, that's fine. I, 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 like, I like being around. People, so I think a, I'll be a good teacher. Oh, I'm sure you would be. So what is what is in the future for you? I know that you're going to go as long as you can to wrestle because I always said that as being a gladiator. I mean, I was like, I'll be a gladiator as long as my body can hold up and as long as the television show holds up. I mean, our show didn't last that long, but yes. wrestling's going to be going on forever. So I know you're going to hold up yeah. a, a very long time, but what's after this? Maybe still being part of wrestling. Mm -hmm. maybe uh maybe like a backstage role or um 
maybe acting. There you go. You know, I, I, I do like, I would like to be a super villain in a movie. I could see you know, that. And play different roles. I would, I would like to do that. I would like to maybe have my own cooking show one day, like my own grilling show. So I take it you're I do a like, cook. I do like to barbecue. Yeah, my grandma taught me well. You know, I like grilling and smoking meat and trying out new things. Food Network is on all the time in my house. <laughs> so I, I, I like to cook. I like that. I'd like to see you in a nice little apron, you know, take your shirt off. Big 270 dude. I have one. <laughs> I have, I'm cooking with Powerhouse. So, you know. That's it. Make, there's your, there's your next adventure right there, Cooking with Powerhouse. That sounds like a great title, as a matter of fact. I think so. <laughs> so, Will. You, you got to try some of my food, so. Oh, my God. I can't wait. So, what makes you emotional? Let's get into you for a second before I let you go. What makes Will emotional? Yeah, what touches your heart? My kids. How many kids you got? <laughs> oh, man, I just have three. Three kids. 17, five, and three. Yes. After a long day, I'll plop down on the couch and I'll just up and just get all cuddly with me and snuggle with me. That makes me emotional. Um, thinking about my uh, my grandparents mm -hmm. on how they like, what would they think about me right now? Thinking of my uh, my mother who uh, passed away a few years ago. So that uh, that gets me a little emotional. And um, thinking, of, I, I do time to time think about um, all the people's lives I've touched, like wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll you'll occasionally meet someone that says, "Oh, you're a wrestler, and you got me through the pandemic by doing this, by doing that." So those those little things uh, gets me emotional. So is your I'm, I'm a softy a little bit? A 270 pound softy. <laughs> yes, yes. So is the next step for you um, in the wrestling, is it is it really hard to get with the WWF or the WWE? I mean, is it is it really hard to make that stepping stone or is it is it just a matter of time? Well, we're, we're on the same level as them. We're, we're their competitors. Oh, okay. um, they're on national TV and we're on national so. We go head to head, so we're we're right on them. Um, we we've beat them in ratings of, um, at times. It's just we're we're right there on their neck. There's two major companies in this business, and it's WWE and AEW. So I, it's we're right there with them. When people say, "Do you ever want to go to WWE?" I tell people we're right there with them. So you're watching AEW or watching WWE, or I think any wrestling fans should watch all wrestling. Mm -hmm. So it's, you're getting all different type of flavor. So we're, we're right there on their neck. When's your next match? So AEW has our pay-per-view, uh, Inglewood, California, November 18th, full year. So it's one of our big uh, pay-per-views in the LA area, which I, I know someone should come out and, um, and watch. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I will, but, uh, I will be here and I will come, and I will come guest. out and watch you. <laughs> be I, my guest. Dude. Watch me uh, destroy somebody. I have never been to a wrestling event. Person. It's so much better. So much fun watching it in person, experiencing all the energy from all the fans in the house. So uh, November 18th, Full Gear, Inglewood, California, is our next pay-per-view. It's uh, You're going to see pretty much, you're going to see the world heavyweight champion there, MJF, defend his belt. Um, it's, you're going to see the legend, the icon, Sting, who's been in the business. Uh, you're going to see Chris Jericho. You're going to see John Moxley, Orange Cassidy. You know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a great show. I'm excited. You know, I just, I, I know someone that should come and if come, don't disappoint me. <laughs> I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. I'm, I'm going to show up. Right. I, I have never seen a live wrestling event. I'm super excited about that. I will be in town. So 
just I'm gonna I'm gonna be there. You're gonna hear me screaming for you. Bye. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> oh my God! Thank I'm you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And and my next question before well, I let you go fun. is what? I said this is fun. It is. I have to have you on um on on my show, the the Powerhouse Hour with Will Hobbs. So anytime. Anytime whatsoever. But here's my next question before I let you go. I want to know, was it yes. you who created all your signature moves because of the fact that I loved reading about all your famous finishing moves? I mean, these names, first of all, the names of these are, are crazy. You got the power slam. You got the spine buster. You have an Oklahoma stampede, torture rack, <laughs> a burning hammer, and an okay. emerald... What is that? What's it? What's the last one? Flosion. The Flosion. Emerald Float. Oh my God! These names sound torturous. Those are the actual names for the movie, or for the actual names. Uh, I didn't come up with the name. Those were those were the names. Uh, the Spine Buster, uh, most famous person to do that was Arn Anderson. Torture Rack, Lex Luger. Um, so Power Slam is you know a lot of the big guys in business uh, have used it. Oklahoma Stampede comes from uh, Dr. Death Williams. So it's just, those are moves from uh, my favorite guys. You know, it's me paying homage to them, you know. And it's just, you know, it's just like one of my saying, I, whenever I do the Spine Buster, people go, yeah, you know, it's, it's all my T-shirts, I break backs. So Spine Buster, Oklahoma Stampede, Power Slam, Torture Rack, I'm breaking your back. So that's what I do. <laughs> What is the most common injury in, uh, uh, for a wrestler, the most common one that happens? I don't think there is a most common one really? because it, it's just I think you can, you can tear something off doing a clothesline or doing a drop kick or it, it all it all depends. There's no one uh, specific, excuse me, um, common injury that we all have. Maybe um, – I don't know. I think people get a lot of raspberries a lot, but I wouldn't call that an injury. I, I mean, I've seen all type of injuries, uh, you know, in the business, you know, broken bones, torn ligaments. So that one move that you do, you put them over your shoulder on one side and then you literally just drop. And every time I saw that, all I can think about is how my lower back would just cringe. <laughs> just like, Fuck. I break back, break backs. I break backs. You know that's my job. Is you know put them out. Ah, oh, that just hurts me to watch <laughs> it. <laughs> they're, 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 I, I I assure you, they're they're all fine. I know. Well, um, thank you so here. much for coming on my show at the last. <laughs> I mean, this is awesome. I mean, you're whatever you want, you get. You're awesome. Thank you so. Ice, everything, <laughs> why you get the word. I like that. You know what? Thank you so much. Don't go anywhere because I've got 30 seconds and I do a rapid fire with all my guests and you're going to actually love this and it's the first thing that comes to your mind. So don't go anywhere as of right now. Thank you so much for being on Chilling with Ice and peace out. Thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcasts. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' with Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetric. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chillin' with Ice.